It is officially week five of the Shuckle Premier League, and today we are matched up against the Thunderclap Titans. As always, we're going to talk a little bit about the matchup, and then we'll go more in-depth on the team I'm bringing before we get into the match. So, taking a look at today's matchup, the very first thing that we notice is that my dude has the Dragapult. Now, this thing is known as pretty much the strongest draft league Pokemon for a few different reasons. Now, first of all, it's extremely fast in a league where speed is very important, but also Dragapult is so good because this thing has the ability to go so many different directions. It can be a physical attacker, it can be a special attacker, it can be support with status like Will-O-Wisp, it can run dual screens with like a light clay, it has the infiltrator option for an ability that can break through screens or substitutes, and in general Dragapult is a mon that you just never know how it's going to be ran. And so that thing is just something that always puts you on your toes. Now, of course, they also have the offensive pressure with the thing, the freaking Goldfish Chi Yu. Literally, a choice specs Chi Yu with its Beads of Ruin, pretty much nothing switches into this. And it's a very fast threat that hits just so damn hard. Uh, they also have the Iron Treads with the potential to run booster energy. It's there for Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock, but also could be offensive, both, both physically or specially. Now... It, it, the first three Pokemon are very big threats to my team. I truly don't have a lot that wants to deal with those. Uh, they also have the potential for like a belly, belly drum Azumarill. It could run Choice Band. Uh, it could be an Assault Vest bulky set. Um, and Azumarill is always a threat when it has the option for the belly drum, you know, with Aqua Jet. So of course, Articuno is there. It's going to be one of their Terra captains. It does have the ability uh, to Terra in, into either flying, fighting, or steel. And I really feel like this thing is probably going to come to our match because fighting type Galarian Articuno with a stored power and access to things like agility and calm mind, it can definitely be a very scary sweeper. They, of course, have. And big threats like Shaman, Okidogi has a potential to be like an Assault Vest or an offensive threat with like a bulk up. Um, and uh, in general, Deoxys D looks like it could be a potential lead option in their last. Uh, Terra Captain is going to be the Rotom Fan. Now, this thing has the opportunity to go Electric Fairy or Steel. And in general, the matchup here is very, very scary for me. The main three Pokemon at the top there are just huge offensive threats. And I just don't know exactly how they're going to be ran. But... With that being said, let's take a look at the team that I'm bringing to the match. To start things off, I'm working with the Choice Scarf Darkrai. Now the reason for this is hopefully I can catch something like a Dragapult off guard, knock it out with a Dark Pulse when I'm not supposed to be able to outspeed. Uh, and other than that, this thing has coverage against their entire team. You know, I have Sludge Bomb for the Azumarill, I have Focus Blast to kill Chi Yu potential, um, and other than that, Psy Shock to hit like an Okie Dogie. I expect that thing to be running maybe an Assault Vest uh, to be able to take attacks from Darkrai. So, you know, a Psy Shock does well. And in general, this Darkrai is just here to be very fast and hit everything super hard. Next up, we have the Sylveon. So, I'm working with an Assault Vest on this thing, and Assault Vest is going to be super clutch on my team just because of the fact that Listen, Chi Yu, and it does ever, like so much damage to everything, and I really need to try to get switch in answers to that. Uh, where this thing is, it's specially defensive enough to be able to take hits, but also it does really well against the prospect of like a Terra Fighting Articuno. Uh, Terra Fighting Articuno looks really nice against my team, and so I do expect them to be running something like that. And with this investment, I can take stored powers after quite a few boosts. But uh, this is just kind of a secondary option as a switch into Chi Yu. I can hit everything pretty hard with a Psy Shock, and I also have, you know, Quick Attack for kind of cheeky priority, uh, but also I have the Psy Shock to, to hit the Okie Dogie relatively hard. So, Skin Ribbons is always a pretty big asset, and that is going to be our Sylveon. Next up, we have Gliscor. So, I'm working once again with a Weakness Policy Agility Set with the Acrobatics, and this thing is here for basically one situation, and that is because I'm really expecting an Assault Vest Okie Dogie to come, and if I can get Gliscor in against an Okie Dogie, while it does have access to Ice Punch, uh, with this HP investment, I should be able to take one Ice Punch, which will then allow me uh, to go for an Agility, activate my Weakness Policy, and then Acrobatics and the combination of that and Earthquake does a lot to basically everything. And uh, the only thing it doesn't hit would be the Rotom Fan, which I have the Rock Slide for just in case that thing wants to come. Uh, but I just plan to try to see if I can get the offensive Gliscor to live an Ice Punch if it's an Assault Vest Okie Dogie. Uh, and realistically, this thing is here. It can take hits from a lot. It does also outspeed Okie Dogie with this speed investment naturally without it in agility. So I can, I can freely quick click earthquakes and it's basically here to see if I can get that weakness policy to get going. And it's always just fun to mess around with like an offensive glide score. Next up, we have a Mon that's gonna function as my sweeper. Now listen, Lumberry Gyarados with Moxie 
it can really get rolling in this matchup. It, it does great against a lot of their team. And after a Dragon Dance with the speed investment, I should be able to outspeed things like the Dragapult. And uh, it is really here with that Lumberry to try to catch a potential Will-O-Wisp, you know, from a Dragapult uh, or any type of status from like a Deoxys. I can set up pretty freely against a Deoxys here. Um, but in general, if I can get this thing behind screens, which we're going to talk about later, uh, Dragon Dance Gyarados looks really nice uh, against pretty much everything. And again, with uh, running the Jolly Nature and the speed investment, we are very fast after a Dragon Dance and we can hit everything for... Pretty much a two hit KO, if not a one hit KO after one or two dragon dances. So I do plan to try to get this thing behind screens, uh, but first we're gonna talk about the Hisuian Gudra. So the Hisuian Gudra is here for one main reason, and that is kind of uh, to take attacks from the Chi Yu. Now a choice specs Chi Yu just does a lot of damage to literally everything in the game, but with an assault vest um, and this special attack investment, I can actually hit things pretty hard and have a lot of coverage against like pretty much everything, right? Like I can uh, get a surf off on the iron treads. Dragon Pulse does a lot to uh, the Dragapult there. And I have like Thunderbolt for the Azumarill. This thing is basically here as kind of just a, a Swiss army knife that can just hit everything for pretty solid, like more damage than you would expect. Uh, with base 1 and 10 special attack, it's actually pretty solid. But Assault Vest should allow me uh, to take attacks from like a potential special uh, Dragapult. I do really expect Dragapult to be a Dragon Dance set with a physical uh, offensive option. It just looks really good against my team. Um, but I know that I can also take attacks from that as well. So this thing is here to kind of be bulky and hit hard and uh, you just do Gudra stuff. Last but not least, we have the Superior. So I'm going with an unconventional Superior set who is running the Light Clay along with dual screens. Now the reason for that is because, again, if I can get Gyarados behind screens or even if I can get the Gliscor behind screens and be able to take an Ice Punch from an Okie Dogie, I would actually be in a really good spot. Um, but dual screens here are supposed to kind of catch them off guard. You know, you see Superior, you imagine this thing is going to be just an offensive contrary set. I actually am not working with any attacks on this thing. And that is because because it's going to be functioning as my dedicated lead. I kind of expect them to go uh, as a lead option with something like the Deoxys defense. I can then taunt that thing. I can glare everything on the team and getting up the reflect and light screen is going to be the key to trying to get one of my offensive options uh, to both be able to take hits, but also just start to set up. So without any further ado, that is the team. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is game time. And first of all, from the team preview, the most important things I notice is that there is no Deoxys defense. There's also no Shaman. But other than that, it looks pretty standard in what I kind of expected him to bring. And overall, they're just going to try to stick to the plan. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So from the start, I'm kind of expecting him to want to lead off with the Iron Treads for Stealth Rock support. So I decide to go with the Superior. And as it turns out, he's just going to go right for the pressure immediately with the Chi Yu. Now, I do not have a whole lot of defensive options on switching into this thing, depending on what kind of set it's going to be. But it turns out I'm going to have to go, you know, with my check to this thing immediately. And what this is going to do is at least allow me a little bit of information on kind of what this thing is. Now, I'm kind of expecting this thing to be choice specs, which means it's going to do a whole lot of damage. Now, they decide to go for that flamethrower, and as it turns out, it's going to do, you know, around 35-ish percent, which means it is not running the choice specs. And that also means it could potentially, you know, be running just like a charcoal item um, or something like a choice scarf. So... I now decide to just go for the Surf, obviously just because it hits the Goldfish for solid damage, but also it uh, is going to hit the Iron Treads, which is kind of one of their best switch-ins here. But they actually decide to go into Okie Dogie. Now, just based off of that damage, that means that this thing is not Assault Vest. And I'm put in a bit of a weird spot here because while I have a Gliscor who is built to take an Ice Punch from this thing and then activate my weakness policy, allow me to set up like an agility, the problem becomes that if they go for the bulk up here, I am no longer able to take the Ice Punch, and that is exactly what they do. So I get in the Gliscor too late on this matchup, and it's not going to result in the Gliscor sweep that I'm hoping for. So at this point, I'm just kind of forced to go for the Earthquake, and with that defense boost, it's definitely going to barely be able to hang on to that, and then fire off the Ice Punch in return, which of course, at plus one, is going to kill me. So... Uh, sadly, I really, the reason why this Gliscor was here for this exact strategy was because I kind of expected an Assault Vest, Okie Dogie, who's not going to be clicking the bulk up. So that does not end up working out, and we are down the Gliscor here, but not a super big deal. It was kind of one of those win conditions to where, like, if it does work, the payoff is huge. But now I can at least switch into Darkrai, who, 
This is, of course, Choice Scarf Darkrai to outspeed like everything on their team. I can now go for the Psy Shock here, and after that chip damage, even with their Psychic Damage Reduce Berry, it is still going to end up knocking this thing out. So, down goes the Okie Doge. We basically trade, you know, Gliscor for the Okie Doge. The good news is, also, they haven't really gotten the intel that my Darkrai is Scarf at this point. Uh, but now they decide to bring in the Dragapult. Kind of leads me to believe they do expect this to be a Scarf Darkrai, as I could potentially take an attack from this thing and go for the Dark Pulse. However, this thing is extremely fast, and I really, really do not know what this thing wants to do. Now, I'm expecting Dragon Dance, which is why this Sylveon is here for this match for a couple different reasons, but one of which, in the main reason, is to be able to handle an offensive on the physical side Dragapult. But it turns out, as I switch this thing in, is actually going to go for the light screen. That tells me this thing is likely going to be light clay with the dual screens and more of kind of a, a defensive answer. So that's a little bit interesting as obviously I threaten this thing out with the hyper voice and I'm going to go ahead and make a double switch. I expect them to go into iron treads to come in and safely take a hyper voice, especially behind screens. So I make the switch and I do get the prediction correct, which allows me to bring in my superior. So Royale Koyal is a little bit of a different superior here where Ordinarily, you see this thing, you're thinking offensive, which is contrary to Leaf Storm, but that is not the case, as I'm actually a dual screens superior myself, and the plan is to try to set up both of these screens. So, I decide to opt for the light screen first, just because uh, it dampens what the Chi Yu can do, uh, and really kind of helps me out against that, and things like the Articuno, um, and I get that up as they actually do reveal the Ice Spinner likely there for the things like the Gliscor. However, I'm just going to take this opportunity to just set up my dual screens. I go for the Reflect now, guarantees that I can take this next Ice Spinner, and it actually looks like I can, in fact, take one more. So this bulky-ass snake is working out relatively nicely here, and my main goal is to try to get up my Sweeper Gyarados, but I obviously don't want to bring this thing in quite yet, and knowing that I can at least take one more attack, I can go for a Glare, which does potentially cover for a switch. Getting anything paralyzed makes Gyarados' life just a whole lot easier. Uh, but they do stay in, and paralyzing this thing with the Glare is going to be pretty nice. However, they do break through the para, and I am at least able to live the Ice Spinner with 14 HP, which is pretty clutch. So, now I have a decision to make. I just decide to go right into the Gyarados. I'm thinking they probably just finished me off uh, with an Ice Spinner or anything of, of the likes of that. So I can just at least bring in the Gyarados and behind the screens, I'm not even worried about a Volt Switch, which they do break through the para once again. Uh, they get the Volt Switch off, which is actually kind of annoying because I was really hoping we would get a full para there and allow Gyarados a chance to you know set up a Dragon Dance already. Uh, however, they get the pivot and now this allows them to go back into the Dragapult. So, I will say that my main game plan for this match was to try to get Gyarados behind screens and to set up Dragon Dances. You know, I'm trained to the point where after a Dragon Dance, I outspeed pretty much everything and I can start sweeping relatively easily. However, one thing I did not plan for is going to be like a dual screens Dragapult. This thing just looked so good offensively with a physical set against my team, but they go for that Reflect as I take this opportunity to set up the Dragon Dance, um, and that is not ideal that now we have to deal with, obviously, the Reflect there. But at least, you know, I do have the Ice Fang coverage here. I would like Crunch, however, I have Ice Fang just for the prospect of Shaman. Uh, I go for the Ice Fang here. It does pretty much nothing, but I get a Freeze, which is honestly kind of ridiculous. It does actually cursed body away the Ice Fang, uh, which is kind of hilarious. It does tell me this thing is not going to be Infiltrator to get through my screens. However, uh, the Freeze there is incredibly unfortunate. I really honestly just wish that that did not happen because Freeze is stupid, but I'm going to at least take this opportunity to go for a second Dragon Dance, uh, knowing that they're behind a Reflect for quite a few more turns. I got to try to get this thing going as much as possible. So the one thing that does deal with Gyarados on their team is going to be the Azumarill. So, Azumarill has, has a couple different options in terms of how this thing can be built. It can be an obvious, you know, belly drum set. It could be like an assault vest set. It could be choice banded. I decide after two Dragon Dances, I'm going to go for an Earthquake here and kind of just scout damage behind the Reflect. And it's looking like it's about a three hit KO. So, they hit me with a play rough, and that is looking like it's a three hit KO as well. And uh, we are both currently behind Reflect at this point. And here's where I have a huge decision to make. I decide to stay in. I, I figured, you know, Gyarados is below half at this point. Uh, Superior doesn't look like it has a great opportunity to set backup screens. And if this thing isn't Citrus Berry, I can hopefully win this matchup. Uh, it turns out it is, in fact, Citrus Berry. And they go for one more play rough here, which does connect and knocks me down to 17 HP, where now my Reflect goes away. So I find myself in a spot where I likely should have switched. 
The problem becomes I didn't have anything that really wants to come in on this, right? Like I need the Hisumi and Gudra to be able to sponge hits from the Chiyu. Uh, Sylveon is super important for everything else. And uh, I, I just, I figured, you know, I got myself in a spot where Gyarados was behind the screens that I needed. And if I could get rid of this Azumarill and win the 1v1, I basically win the game with the Gyarados due to the freeze. However, it does not end up happening that way. I definitely probably should have switched into something like I could have, you know, sacked off Superior there and then got in like a Sludge Bomb Darkrai. But, you know, again, I, I feel like in, in these matches, a lot of the time I, I mess things up by just not going for the offensive option. In that case, the Reflect really threw a wrench in my plans. Uh, and that is quite unfortunate. So my win condition with the Gyarados is going to go down. And at this point, I can at least bring in the Hisui and Gudra, uh, who can still decently take physical attacks, but... I decide to go for the T-Bolt, thinking maybe they stay in there with the Azumarill, but they make the nice play and switch right back into the Iron Treads. So, here's the thing, the Iron Treads does not have a light screen up, and if they get a para here, I know I can get a huge damage and two-hit KO, potentially with a Surf. Uh, so I decide to stay in as nothing wants to switch into this. Surf is not quite going to do a two-hit KO, however, they also break through the para, and an Earthquake is going to kill me. So, down goes the Hisumi and Gudra, we get a little bit of chip, off on the Iron Treads, but again, now I don't really have a switch in into uh, Chiyu that much, other than the Assault Vest Sylveon, which is going to need to be, going to need to come in clutch. So, at least now I can go back into Darkrai here, and Choice Scarf Darkrai is kind of pushed in an interesting situation here, where I can obviously, you know, I can kill this thing with a Focus Blast uh, that could potentially bring in the Dragapult to try to, uh, like, thaw out. It obviously, being locked into Focus Blast is not ideal, but I decide to go for the Dark Pulse. Now, I do this because I know that I can take a hit from this thing. I can also get a Flinch or a Full Para. They do, in fact, knock it either, so the Flinch would have been super nice there, or a, a Full Para, um, but that does not quite happen, and I'm forced to just go for a second Dark Pulse here. So, listen, some Para action would have been great on these damn treads. However... I definitely used up all my luck on getting a freeze that it does not make any difference at all for me, it turns out. But, uh, down goes the Iron Treads, and Darkrai taking that amount of chip is actually wildly unfortunate. But, it is what it is, and at this point, I know that this Articuno is here as the Terra Captain to go into a Terra Fighting position. So, obviously I can't stay in and go for the Dark Pulse, and if I know this thing, which I think I do, it's definitely going to go for something like an Agility, or like a Calm Mind. Now, I bring in Superior because if it goes for the Calm Mind, I can actually uh, outspeed and then go for a Glare. But of course, they are going to commit that Terra Fighting here. And the Terra Fighting Articuno is honestly a super big threat. Now, the good news is it doesn't have that many tricks up its sleeve and that I know what this thing kind of wants to do. Um, and yeah, they do end up going for the nice play, which is the Agility. It gives them that plus two speed. And now this thing is going to be faster than the entire team. So what I decide to do is basically just sack the Superior at this point, a Terra Blast. Uh, they're forced to go for an attack at least, which is why it's nice to bring in Superior here because then they can't, you know, go for like a, they can't go for a combine or else they run the risk of getting paralyzed from the glare. Um, but they do finish me off with that Terra Blast, and we are down to two Pokemon left now. One of them being Sylveon at full HP, conserving this thing is actually really nice for me in this spot because this Sylveon is also built to handle this exact you know, type of Articuno. So, what I can do here is, since they don't have any special attack boosts, they're not going to be able to do too much damage to me. So, they have to go for the Calm Mind here, uh, which unfortunately is going to give them enough bulk to be able to live a Hyper Voice. So, they get that plus one special attack and special defense, and the Hyper Voice is going to do a nice little chunk of damage, but of course not quite enough. And, the icing on the cake is he actually also has the weakness policy. So that's going to both uh, boost the special attack and attack. And now this thing's stored power is at an insane level of power. Uh, to where I'm like, okay, I actually don't know if I can even live anything from this anymore. But Sylveon is extremely clutch because I do barely hang on. That allows me to go for the draining kiss just to get as much damage uh, as possible. This thing had so much boosts from... Um, all those stat increases with that stored power. It's actually insane that this Sylveon was able to live. I can then finish it off with a quick attack, which is actually amazing. We did just enough with the Draining Kiss. Now, sadly, we didn't do enough to, you know, heal ourselves to, like, a super comfortable point to where I know that I can comfortably, you know, take attacks from something like a Chiyu, but we at least get rid of the immediate huge threat, which is the Galarian Articuno. So, this now draws in the Chiyu, and Chiyu is in a spot where... Judging by the damage it did to the Hisui and Gudra, I really feel like this thing finishes me off here with a flamethrower. Uh, so just before I decide I'm gonna go down, I just click the quick attack just to get some chip here, and they do go for that flamethrower. And as it turns out, I actually lived that with 14 HP, which is 
actually insane. I feel like that was a low roll because I'm not supposed to live that. Um, but it's actually kind of annoying because I could have gone for the Hyper Voice there, which would have done, you know, a bunch more damage. But it is what it is. I can go for one more quick attack there just for the chip as I go down to the Flamethrower. And we are now down to our final Pokemon, which is going to be the Darkrai. So, Darkrai is in, again, a very weird spot here with the Choice Scarf to where I know I outspeed everything. And if I lock myself into a Focus Blast, you know, I can kill the Chi Yu here. No problems as long as I connect. Problem becomes, then Dragapult just comes in, and then I just have to run from the match. So, what I decide to do here is, you know, Sludge Bomb potentially uh, could win me the game, but it actually is not chipped enough to the point where Sludge Bomb kills. Sludge Bomb takes out the Azumarill, and if the Dragapult stays frozen, it kills that. So what I decide to do is go for the Dark Pulse and roll for a flinch here. And as it turns out, the fish does not get flinched, um, and that is going to be the end of the match. So they finished me with the Flamethrower. Uh, the kind of just last ditch effort there with the uh, with the, the Dark Pulse was kind of just my only play. Uh, they did also still have the priority with the Aqua Jet in the back with the Azumarill. And yeah, we're going to lose another one of the, of the draft matches. And uh, there's pretty much no excuse at this point. I'm definitely just down tremendously. In hindsight, I played badly in the situation with the Gyarados. I just felt like be being below half health and not having really a good switch in to the Azumarill, I just tried to get whatever I could value out of the Gyarados that I could. But um, the moral of the story is I'm definitely very bad at these draft league matches. I truly don't even really know but it is. I feel like my team has the tools to win. I just do not pilot it very well at all. Definitely got to give a huge shout out to Uzi for playing a fantastic game. Buddy is a fantastic draft player and also a great human. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely going to go winless in this draft league, which I didn't expect to do well, but I didn't expect to be this extremely horrible. Um, <laughs> at this point, I mean, it is what it is and it's not good.